Hey guys and welcome back to another BlizzCon video. So today I'm going to be going over some of the stuff that we've heard about Overwatch at the con. Now I'm in a future video going to go over all of the 12 announced heroes in specific and give you my thoughts on their mechanics but right now I'm just going to give you an overview of what Chris Metzen and Jeff Kaplan said in the individual panel that Overwatch had. So first of all the main thing they talked about um, at the start of the talk was the world. Of course, it's a bit strange having a BlizzCon game set on Earth, and essentially, it's set on a, well, rather different Earth to our own. So it's 60 years ahead of now, which actually does seem rather close. However, 60 years is enough for them to get this kind of really cool sci-fi thing without, um, you know, it just being completely unrelatable to people. So you could still have a map that's set at the Eiffel Tower or something like that. And the whole lore of the world is that sometime 30 years in the future for us, there was um, this uh, this like giant robot problem known as the, I think the Omnic Crisis or something. Anyway, basically there was these robots called Omnics. They were all over the place. They helped people out. And then one day they just decided to kill people because why the hell not? I mean, people are dicks. I don't blame them. But the good news is that these people called, um, you know, banded together called Overwatch. And Overwatch stopped the Omnics and that was all great. And Overwatch came about because a whole bunch of, you know, all the superpowers just pulled all their best stuff together and thus this institution of Overwatch was born and they've basically been, um, you know, this international coalition that looks after the world and tries to make sure that bad stuff doesn't happen. However, for some unbeknown reason, they have fallen into darkness within the last five years and it seems like that's going to be a major plot element of the game. Um, then also when they talked about the world, they said really they're going for the world just to be really colourful and bright and them um, like that, which I think is absolutely the best thing to do because we've got enough brown and grey military suitors. It's just nice to have a game that's full of brightness and actually it's something I like about Team Fortress too. I know I am drawing that comparison, but it's nice to have a game with a just a different art style and a bit more colour, so I really do appreciate that in the world design of this game. So now that the general world is covered, let's talk about the gameplay. So first of all, they said that this game is really about the heroes that they're making and it's not about Twitch gameplay. These seem to be kind of two of the major defining things about this game. Now sure, there are things like snipers, but if you don't like Twitch, then you can say, uh, get a support hero or a healing hero that's not based off that kind of gameplay. This seems to just be a way of making sure that the game has got a role that is fun and accessible for everyone. Personally, I've got no problem playing a heavily Twitch-based class, but maybe if you are not used to shooters and you still think the idea of helping out your team in this action-oriented setting is fun, then you can be a healer. And um, they will basically have various different heroes with different skill sets that will fit different playstyles and fit what people want to do. I think this is a really good way of doing it, actually, and overall it's, yeah, it's just a, it's a nice departure from how a lot of shooters are being done. Metzen described some shooters as just being kind of like cynically punishing and things like that, and they just like the idea of how it's going to be in this. Now, also, they said that you probably won't die as much as in some of those Twitch shooters where, you know, like in Call of Duty, where you get shot twice and then you're dropped and then you have to respawn. They said that, yes, the game is certainly balanced around you eventually dying, but... Overall, you should have a bit more control over that and the way the maps are designed and the way all that stuff is done. It just means that it's going to be a bit less punishing in terms of, um, you know, dying instantly. And uh, yeah, basically, just mechanically, it's not going to be like one of those Twitch shooters where some guy, you know, way over there shoots two bullets, they hit you in the head and you're gone. I think that's good, actually, because games that don't have that much Twitch gameplay can actually be extremely tactical. And one of the things that I love the most about, say, Halo is that, yes, while there are some Twitch skills with, say, the sniper rifle, with the basic, you know, BR dueling, everyone's going to headshot everyone. That's just how it goes. But the depth and interestingness of gameplay of, of the gameplay of Halo comes from the movement system and, um, you know, sort of dueling around other players and coordinating your team. I think some of those elements are just far more facilitated when you don't have a Twitch game where you're dropped in two shots, and it's great to see that here, um, not here's the storm, <laughs> um, that Overwatch is going for that. Anyway, so in terms of other gameplay related things, they've been talking about the team sizes. Now, it's a 6v6 game, and even on the original video that I did on this game, a lot of people said, oh, 6 v, you know, 6v6 is just a little bit too small. Well, they said that they have tested larger team sizes, and it just got to the stage where they felt like it meant that the individual player didn't have enough just impact. They didn't feel like they were having too much of an impact on the game. And conversely, when they went down to 3v3 and 4v4, 
they just found that, it, you know, the individual player had too much of an impact. So if they were bad, you know, if they maybe just had a bad day, then it would crash the team and ruin it for everyone. So they just think that 6v6 is a good balance. Personally, I can say that I agree. You know, I've most of the, many of the shooters that I've enjoyed are, you know, 6v6s and in around that sort of size. And I think that certainly on PC, that works very well. And hopefully the maps will facilitate all that stuff quite well. Now, speaking of maps, they said that the maps are completely objective focused. They're, um, you know, things like, say, attack, defend. I think they have a payload map, and they also have some maps which will vary in stages. So half the map could be an attack, defend thing, and the other half could be perhaps a payload style game type. They also are very clear to point out there's no deathmatch. Do you see a bit of a, a bit of a trend here? You know, they've been saying no Twitch shooting, no deathmatch. Very much trying to go against this current convention of it only being military shooters, uh, modern military shooters which is a really good thing, you know, it's it's nice that there's something else doing a Team Fortress 2-ish thing, but of course because of all the hero powers and the way that this game is done, it's going to play completely differently to Team Fortress 2. It's actually very frustrating how people are making that um, comparison where, you know, if you actually look at the gameplay of this game, it is completely different to TF2. They are both FPSs, yes. The rest of it, different. Really different. Anyway, so... Um, they went on to talk about the playable heroes and how many there could be. And currently there are 12 at BlizzCon. However, they're, they're planning on there being many more. Once again, I think this is great for variety. And uh, yeah, pretty cool. Now, as well, I'm talking about heroes. They said that one of their big taglines is that it's about heroes, not classes. And I think what they're getting at is that every hero is very unique. And it's not as if they all conform to a specific sort of class. It's not like, I don't know, like a demo man or something. You know, every hero is completely designed around the character of that hero, and that's, I think, quite evident on a mechanical level, which I think is really nice for just making varied gameplay and, and just interesting, unique characters that you can play. So I think that's pretty cool. Now, they talked about a hero called uh, Tracer as an example. She's the one on the cinematic for the game. Um, and basically, her thing is that she has a blink, which is like, you know, you blink 10 meters forward, you can do it up to three times, fine. But her main mechanic... It's like kind of her, her ultimate ability. Um, yes, the heroes in this game do have ults. Um, the, the ult is that you basically retrace your steps. So for an example, you could run in, kill someone, take some damage, but then just turn back time, go back to where you started with the same amount of health as where you started, and uh, continue in your merry way. I think that's such a cool ultimate ability. And every hero is going to have one. So I think that's just, again, something that's really good for making each one of these heroes feel really, really different. So yeah, I think that's really, really awesome. I'm like, I'm very positive about this game. I enjoy TF2, but that said, it's nice to have something, you know, be a different shooter in sort of the same vein as, you know, TF2 and that it's not the kind of standard modern military thing. And then actually do different things with having hero abilities, with the way they're doing the maps and all this stuff. It just really does excite me. Now, the next thing they talked about was roles. So the roles, they said, are not as heavily defined in this game as they are in many other ones, but there are sort of roles. So you've got supports, which, you know, heal, buff, and do utility things, which I think is fair enough. Then you've got defensive characters who have got a lot of, you know, armor and health. They're very punchy, and they'll soak up a lot of damage, which is pretty cool. Um, then there's also defensive heroes who are good at guarding areas. You know, they can maybe build turrets, fortify areas, new stuff like that, which again is cool. Then there are just offensive characters who are really good at, you know, scouting, um, harassing, doing high damage, and being faster. Another thing they said is that you can actually change heroes when you die. I really like this. Um, so it just means you're not locked into one hero at the start of the match. Of course, this um, this game, as they actually said, is not going to have a progression system within matches. So you just pick your hero and away you go. They said that a progression system would basically just be adding kind of too much, and it's really... The case that the pace of this game is so fast in comparison to, say, Heroes of the Storm, where it doesn't make sense to have in-match ability customization for this, whereas in Heroes of the Storm, as an example, it does make a lot of sense to have that. Finally, they talked a little bit about maps. So the map design in this game is apparently to emphasize the um, the movement and also try to get people into team fights. That's actually something that happens a lot in, say, Heroes of the Storm with the way it's done with objectives. You know, it's all about pushing people into team fights and objectives and stuff like that which again, I think just makes for more dynamic gameplay than a raw deathmatch. Though I can certainly see there being a desire for a deathmatch within this game, uh, still, I don't really think the mechanics of these characters are really going to work out too well in a deathmatch setting, especially in terms of balance and stuff like that. 
So if they did a death match at some point, then I think a lot of characters would just flat out not be viable. Anyway, so they also talked a little bit about the um, the sort of stylization, and um, one of the again one of the great things about their Earth setting is they can just do stylized versions of real world places, which can add a lot of their own flair, and you know they can inject their own universe into it, which I think is great. Um, now the examples they gave were the Temple of Anubis, which is a techno pyramid, which I think is pretty cool. Then there's also Hanmura, which I don't know about, and then also King's Row. So that's what you've got in terms of maps. Certainly, all the footage I've seen of the maps of this game. Um, you know, that's looked really good. So certainly, again, looks interesting on the maps. However, you know, this is a shooter, so maps are one of the most important things. They need to be well designed. So certainly, if you do get into the beta, that's one thing I suggest you be really critical of and just try to nail down is the maps, because bad maps can ruin a good game. Okay, so finally, they did a Q&A session. Now then, first of all, they do not know whether this is going to be a free-to-play game or not. Personally, I think that free-to-play makes the most sense. There's no point in this being a box product. You can have skins and things like that from all the various heroes, um, and maybe you could, I don't know, do a free hero rotation, like kind of like a MOBA, but a shooter MOBA or something. I mean, you could do that, but then again, you ideally would want it to be at least like, I'd say, Team Fortress 2, in the way that you can play all, at least all the roles and classes. Um, it's, it's a bit tricky doing things like that in a shooter, certainly, so it'll be very interesting to see how this business model actually um, pans out. Now, they also said that some elements of Titan did get into Overwatch. However, you know, Overwatch was a different project to Titan, and they do have sort of different things. Um, they actually at one other point said that I think Overwatch had kind of been an idea floating around the place for about five years. So it certainly had plenty of time to stew, though it, I definitely do get the vibe that it really is only kicked off within the last year or two. So yeah, that's what's going on. It, it definitely seems like a more recent development, I can say that much. Now then, they also said that the game will initially be a PC game, but they will think about consoles in the future, and that in terms of hardware, the requirements should be pretty, you know, modest, as they usually tend to be with Blizzard games. I think that's great, but again, I'd always say, Blizzard, you know, you're great at making your games run in many systems, but you're terrible at making them run well. You're not good at making the most use out of system resources, and it gets very annoying, so Blizzard, please fix that. It would be nice. Now then, in terms of other things that they talked about in the Q&A, they said that in terms of balance within a team, having two of the same hero on a team is fine, but any more than that's probably getting to the stage of imbalance. They also said that there is a party um, chat system within the game, and that they are also thinking of doing some sort of lobby chat with voiceover services, but they don't know whether to do, well, actually, they said they're leaning on doing it like it, with an external provider. I think that would be similar to how, say, the Curse client is built into Smite, and that's generally good, I, I think, anyway. I mean, yeah, it's very convenient having the in-game one, but well-integrated external services can at least lead to very good performance. Like, the voice integration with Smite is just fantastic, and it really does help for teamwork. So hopefully, whatever it is, it's easy to do. There's no complicated process or setting up or anything like that, and it just works. That's, I think, the ultimate goal if teamwork is what you want. Then finally, they said that they um, don't really have skins, leveling, or achievements worked out at this stage. Honestly, it, it just seems like currently all they have is the fun shooter, and uh, really a lot of the businessy elements around that are just not worked out, which is fine. Now, in terms of one or two other little tidbits before I go, and um, this is currently a multiplayer-only game, some of the story will be more just told via d different things to um, just, you know, a traditional, like, shooter that comes with a single-player campaign. No idea what that is. Metzen said that they had plenty of ideas, but they're not really able to talk about everything at the minute. So right now, what they're selling us, um, I mean, idea-wise, what they're selling us is the idea of this six-versus-six six sort of, you know, game in which you are focusing um, on objectives, on really cool maps, with a wide variety of heroes, which all are mechanically quite different. And you know what? That sounds... It just sounds exactly like the kind of casual shooter that I would want to play. Now, full disclosure, you know, the Master Chief Collection is coming out in a few days. I will buy that. I will play it with multi, you know, on multiplayer a lot. I've been playing loads of Advanced Warfare. I sort of like CS. I dabble time to time. Um, so I do like my traditional styles of shooters. But then again, this is also something that really appeals to me. So yeah, great stuff all about. And it's just lovely to see a company... Try a shooter that's, um, you know, not the sort of typical, boring, uh, easy way out option that many, many shooters end up being. So props to you, Blizzard. Can't wait to find out more about this game and hopefully get some more gameplay footage. That's what I really want to see. 
But uh, yeah, that's it for the video. Let me know what you think, and I will see you next time.